Okay, I am now going to ask a series of questions, and I'm going to ask particular audience members to give me the answers. And the answer can only be the two words or whatever that you combine, the words that you combine together with the person next to you. Everybody understand the instructions? All right, so what? All right, so what is the name of our rock band right there? What's the name of our rock band? Light chair. Light chair. Love them. Light chair. They are awesome. And they got that record out now. And it's called what? Camera rigging. Camera rigging. <laughs> love that. Light chair with their new record, camera rigging. And that cover, I love that cover of that record. I'm going to ask these two to stand up right here. Just stand up. Just stand up for me. Just turn around. This is not going to hurt, I promise. Just turn around. I'm going to give you a count of three. I want you to strike a pose on the count of three. This is the cover of camera rigging. <laughs> One, two, three, strike a pose. Boom. I love that. Do you love that record? I love that. And there's that, there's that new single, that new single from the record. Do you, what, was it, what, was it, what was it called again? What was, what was it called? White Light Curtain. White Light Curtain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> White Light Curtain, the new single. And what you guys don't know is that the, the lead singer of, White, of, the, the, of, this, of this band is in the audience today. Where are you at? I can't remember where you're at. I knew you are here, but where are you? Where's I saw, all right, the lead singer's right there. Stand up for us. The lead singer. What was, all right, what was the name of our song again? White Light Curtain. So our lead singer's going to sing us that one line. With that melody, that hook. What is it, White Light Curtain? Give us that line. White Light Curtain. Yeah, White Light Curtain. Yeah, and you love that. We're all, we're all going to sing it together on the count of three. One, two, three. White light curtain. Oh, yeah. Give yourselves a hand. See, listen. Here's the truth. You can find humor and you can find possibility when you work together. We'll give it a shot. Whoa. Oh, it on a prayer. What do you think was the tight pants that got them to hit those notes? <laughs> I think every single person with an earshot of my voice right now, and every person that you know, and every person that I know, we all have the ability to transcend mediocrity, to find a groove and achieve greatness. But I tell you this, it is never an accident. Besides that, we know change is not inherently bad. We know it. Because, for example, if your employer came in and had a meeting with you this very week and said, Holy smokes, 2014 was such a great year. It's unbelievable. We have such a huge surplus. And as a reward for all your hard work and everything you've done, we're giving you a $20,000 a year pay raise. There is not a person with an earshot of my voice right now, there's not a person in this room who would look back at their employer and say, oh, $20,000 will change everything for me and my family. And I hate change. I can't accept. No one would do that. If by chance, there is a person that would do that, and they can hear me right now, wherever you are, Branson, wherever you are, if you can hear me, I will be glad to take those 20 Gs off your hands. That's just the kind of guy I am. <laughs> I'm a giver or a taker, depending on how you want to look at that. I don't know. I want you to risk really well. I want you to risk really well. In fact, I want you to risk like a love song. I remember one day, I was going to a theme park with a bunch of my friends. What you need to know is one of the friends that was going was a girl that I, uh, she had caught my fancy. And there she was. Radiant, brown hair blowing in the breeze. Sporting those Reebok sneakers. <laughs> So I just, right there in front of the whole crowd, everybody, I just walked right up to her. I looked her right in the face and I said, I can be your hero, baby. <laughs> I could kiss away the pain. Oh, yeah. Now it's still on you. Really? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> and 
I grabbed her by the hand and I just started walking. And I remember thinking in my head, man, if she lets go, I'm in trouble. Like I'm the laughing stock, I'll never hear the end of it. But if she keeps holding on. This well, this was like my great moment, right? And you know what? Hands. Such an hands. I got songs for everybody, come on. <laughs> Reaching out. Here we go. Such an me. Interesting little caveat, she's still holding on. We have been given this extraordinary life with all kinds of opportunities, and we all have the ability to achieve great things. Is there something in you? Is there some untapped potential in you? What can you do to go head and heart all in and risk like a love song? to see something great happen. The love song code is just simply this, asking yourself, what do I want to do? Do I want to live the what if I could life? Do I want to live and love the what if I could life? Or do I want to loathe the what if I had one? And then decide, I'm going to be intentional, and I'm going to live the what if I could life. I'm going to risk well, because life is too short for anything else. Respond like a jazz player. After 20 minutes of fussing with a broken lockbox. Mm. You're three o'clock, no shoes on you. Again. Mm. I get it. Mm. Clients going soft on you. Mm. And you just want to punch them real hard. Mm -hmm. I know, I know, I know. Easy. Well, everybody would be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I wrote that just for you. Thank you. I'm so calm. Thank you. I had to ask for that applause. I would you. But I you all that time. <laughs> so. So respond like a jazz player. I believe it was that great, lucid, and very articulate voice who um, often drops pearls of wisdom into humanity. Um, Mike Tyson, anyone? Yeah. Uh, with the face tattoo thing going there? Yeah. I believe he, he said once, um, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> and I love that. Because it's just so true. Birth of Jazz to me equals an oppressed group of people going through incredible, incredibly adverse circumstances, finding a voice, a vehicle, and an outlet to deal with the negative things in their life, taking things that would otherwise be negative and turning them into something completely new and positive. Brilliant. So for example, there was an E, but now there was an E. Follow me? There was the old D to C. But now we have D C you see. <laughs> Listen, I don't know how many chords there are in the realm of music, and frankly, I don't need to know. It's not keeping me up at night or anything. So like don't like you don't like research and email me. I don't care. <laughs> but, <laughs> But what I do know is this, that a large amount of those chords are owed directly to jazz musicians and jazz music, who opened up entirely new chords, facing difficult circumstances in their life, saying, how do we channel this into something positive? And they end up unlocking new sounds, new chords that had never been heard before. And I just think we could all learn a lot from that. Step one in this action plan is simply this, make fun of the problem. Make fun of the problem. That's the objective. The outcome will be, you, it will move you from paralyzation, from a feeling of being paralyzed, to a place of potential. You'll go from being paralyzed by this change 
to a place where you'll see potential in the change. Make fun of the problem. Listen, categorically, making fun of the problem will not make the problem more fun. <laughs> Don't mishear me. But it will make it more manageable as you reassume your rightful position over the problem instead of the problem having a position over you. I bought her a brand new house and she called it a shack. Purchased a vacation for two. She took my brother and they haven't come back. She's my lady. At least she was too lately. She's my brother's lady and she left me the blues. Ha ha! What if in our lives, what if adversity is a gift to us? And what if it's moved you out of your box of comfort and you could say, great, now it's time to start thinking out of the box for new solutions. Because maybe right now the thing I'm enduring, I'm supposed to open up new chords that I've never even heard before. What, what if adversity is a gift to you? And what if it's meant to come into your life so that you could unlock new chords and new sounds and things that you had never heard before and or experienced in your own life? Things that would shock you. Things that would be like, I didn't even know life could sound like this. I didn't even know I could do this. I didn't even know this was possible. And it would never have happened if something bad hadn't happened as a precursor to push you out of comfort into the realm of what now? The second thing you need to do is you need to learn to play by ear. Learn to play by ear. When you learn to play by ear, you move from pity to possibility. You move from a place of pity to possibility. Now, I should say right now, learn to play by ear is a little ambiguous, and here's what I don't mean. When I say learn to play by ear, I don't mean, I guess I'll just take it as it comes. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. Okay? I'm actually talking about incredible focus. So here's the thing with learning to play by ear. Learning to play by ear is all about learning how to listen well. Listen to your environment. Get in tune with your circumstances. It's all about asking questions. Here's the good news. When you go through something difficult in your life, when you go through an unwelcome change, an unwelcome change of circumstances, you will question things automatically. It's like a knee-jerk reaction. That's the good news. The bad news is you will ask all the wrong questions. We will question. We just ask the wrong questions. We ask questions that start with things like this. Why? Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to us? Why? We didn't do anything. And then the next question we'll ask is, who? <laughs> who is responsible for this? And I'm going to tell you right now, and if you're being honest, you know this is true. We will always surmise that we did nothing to deserve this. We didn't do anything to deserve this hardship. Someone else is responsible, and we will find out who. And if, what, if, you know, what if this adversity thing and tension thing, what if these are good things? What if tension is good? What if tension in your life is a good thing? And I know what you're thinking. You're like, Rob, you were pushing it way too far here. There's no way this is right. And if, you, if I were you and you're a savvy person, I would be demanding some sort of proof. How could tension ever be a good thing? And the only thing I could offer you as Exhibit A is this. I'm going to talk. A basic acoustic guitar is made up of six strings, four of which are wound. Do you know this? They're wound strings. They're wound really tight. Um, do you know anybody like that, by the way? <laughs> Just like wound really tight? Maybe, maybe you are wound really tight. I don't know. And the other two strings are not wound. They are far more delicate and brittle. You, you know anybody like that? Maybe a little more delicate disposition? These six strings are taken through a bridge, they're right across a fretboard, they're saddled into a little small strip of bone called a nut, they're taken into what are called machine heads or tuning pegs, and then those machine heads are cranked up, and little gears rotate back here, and guess what gets applied to wound tight and or brittle strings? Tension. It's not hard to see where I'm going here. Can't avoid the tension. Let's find the right tension, right? Because you don't want too little tension in your life. Let's be honest. Too little tension? No, oh, that doesn't matter. This is where the potheads are. You know Nor do you want too much tension. I mean, whoa! That doesn't feel good. You know, you stretch it enough. Suddenly, the strings start snapping and breaking. You don't want that. But you get 
You get that thing in the right tension? You get a, a wound tight inner brittle string managing the right tension with other strings that are balanced and managed in the right tension. Oh, suddenly you start hearing new sounds, things you've never heard before. Like, what if the strings were like people, right? And what if, like, the goal was not to leave attention, it was, like, to live in the right tension? And what if, like, marketing and accounting were in balanced tension together? What if, like, producer and consumer were in balanced tension together? And you might just find... <laughs> the anthemic life you've been looking for. Gino works at diner all day Working for a man, she brings home her pay for love. For love. She said, We got a Forget these three things Don't, 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 don't Don't you Forget these three things As you walk on out Go and apply them Don't just walk away I want to take us out on a high note Research suggests that when a group of people sing together in a choir-like fashion that an endorphin is released in the brain that has a positive effect similar to that of an addictive drug. It's true. The caveat is it doesn't happen when you do this alone. It happens in a group. So we're gonna go out singing one simple word. That word is law. You with me? Here we go! Come on! I say, la, 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 la.